35, 92.1, WROI, WROI, FM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and soon to have audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Brant is in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. All right. Time now to talk to Brian Johnson, Fulton County Community Foundation, part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Morning, Brian. Good morning, Tom. It certainly is a lovely day. It is a nice day today, going on. So we'll take take a few more of these throughout the summer. Absolutely. All so the way through the summer, right? That'd be perfect. So, Well, hey, we got a lot of things going on we at do. the foundation. Um, I wanted to talk, just put some reminders out about some scholarship applications that will be coming due here in the next week or so. Um, July 7th, we have a deadline for a number of our applications. Um Starting off with a Back Home Again in Indiana scholarship. Um, this is for non-traditional and GED students. So um, the way non-traditional is defined is somebody over 25 that maybe didn't take a traditional path to school. Maybe they took a couple years off before they went back for their bachelor's degree or even just needing some extra training for a current career um, that they're working in. So that scholarship is available. Um, the Fulton County Youth Scholarship um, one of the requirements for this is that students um, need to have completed at least one year of college. Um, and then they're also planning to work in an area that um, serves and works with children or youth. Um, so that's a scholarship that's available. Um, the Eric E. Smoker Memorial Scholarship. Of course, Eric was a very talented artist. Yes, he was. Um, some of the requirements, they have to be a graduate of a Fulton County High School. Um, they will be a junior or senior this coming year um, and majoring in an art field, um, including painting, sculpture, drawing, or architect. Um, so that's a scholarship that's available. Um, a couple of graduate level scholarships, the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship. Um, this is for any students pursuing some sort of graduate level degree, um, whether they're just starting or they're in that process already. Um, but some of the requirements, they need to be a Fulton County resident um, and have been able to maintain a GPA of a B or higher in their undergraduate work or at their current graduate um, work. Um, and then the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. Um, that's for students who have been accepted into any law school in the United States. Um, one of the requirements is they needed to be a Fulton County resident for at least three years during their high school career. Okay. Um, and all of those scholarships, um, the applications can be found um, on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can click on the Fulton County Scholarship link and see the applications there. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're more than happy to talk to you. Um, we can connect you with Allison Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, um, and we like to see these support folks that are getting ready to do great things for our community. So um, when we're talking about scholarship applications as well, I know it's the middle of summer. I guess we can call it. It'll be July next week. Um, we have um, preschool scholarships again this year that we are able to um, support. Um, if you have not, if you have a preschool age student, and have, don't have them signed up yet but are interested, I'd encourage you to um, talk with some of the local preschools. They know about this scholarship. They have applications That's for it. That's important for some folks, isn't it? It right? is, and it's it's a really, um, it's a good way to get the educational career kicked off right um, and help students get on that right track and so that at some point they don't have to be catching up with the, the rest of the students. Um, if you have trouble finding a preschool, give us a call. We can put you in contact with a preschool in your area um, to see if they have openings. I know some of them have already filled up. There's others that still have some openings, um, but we'd love to help support that. And while we're on the themes of scholarships, um, this last month we spent handing out scholarships at schools and also um, just had our scholarship reception. Um, just looking at some of the numbers, um, we have 53 scholarship funds this year that have given out scholarships. Um, 76 students have received scholarships from these funds um, and a number of 119 individual scholarships going out to students. And then when we look at the dollar amount, this is including the Lilly Scholarship, um, over $210,000 in scholarships have been distributed to 
local students. It's, it's really neat to it? see that. And when we talk about the cost of education, these scholarships um, not only help provide that, but they also help encourage students um, when somebody's saying, hey, we're behind you, we think you can succeed, and, and we like what you've done, and we want to help encourage you take that next step. Um, it's really a win-win when a student has somebody come by and say, hey, we believe in you. You can do this. And it's, it's neat to see that. So thank you to all of our donors who have made these scholarships possible. Um, and congratulations to the Amen. students receiving these. We, we're looking forward to the great things that you're going to be able to do with this. So, Well, with that, we have um, with us today Charlie Rood, who is the director of the Kiwana Union Township Library. Welcome, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Thanks, Brian. Nice to have you with us. Appreciate the invitation. I guess first off, I'd like, um, for folks that may not be familiar with, give us just a brief history about the Kiwana Library. Well, the Kiwana Library's been around for over 100 years. Uh, we still operate out of a Carnegie-granted library. Uh, we did put a building addition on it in 2011. Okay to uh, get an elevator and a little handicap accessibility. And uh, ever since then, we've been taking off in great directions. All right. So talk to us a little bit about, um, I guess, some of the areas that you serve, your your regional area. And well, Kiwana's library is an independent, and uh, we serve Union Township. And that's everything from Bruce Lake on down south of uh, Kiwana a little ways. Okay. Um, we serve a population of about 1,400. Okay. So it's pretty small. Yeah. But but really, I think one thing that I've noticed recently is the library is kind of the hub of the community, a lot of things going on. So so talk to us a little bit about some of the the programming, some of the services that you guys have, because it's, it's pretty amazing if folks haven't figured, haven't seen it. Um, your Facebook page and website have all kinds of events going on. So talk to us a little bit about some of the things you guys do at the library. Yeah, we, we're all about connecting to the community and serving the community and getting information out to the citizens of what's going on in the area. Not just library programs, but town information and uh, community events. And uh, right now we're in the summer reading program stage, so we've been pretty busy with the kids out of school yeah. trying to promote literacy and keep them reading over the summertime. We think that's pretty important. But we have a variety of uh, programs for all ages at the library. We have uh, a coffee group that's probably just showing up right about now. Yeah. And they talk community news, local news. Um, we had a great demonstration from REMC last week. Um, it's always nice to see Greg uh, cook a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. um, we do have uh, creation stations on Wednesdays where we uh, do crafts and uh make uh, different things out of some recycled materials and the theme was uh, build a better world so we're trying to build bridges and things like that with the youth um, we also have a uh, history program uh, with Marvin Good he has a uh, train history and local Kiwana history and he's got an ongoing program um, that's pretty well attended um, we have a uh, family game nights the Lego Club um, and we've had a couple great programs from the Tippecanoe River State Park, um, animals and nature. So we got a wide variety of every age group. There's yeah. something for everybody at the library. Yeah. And I know I was at an extension meeting this last week. They said they've provided programs over there. It seems like there's something always going on. Purdue Extension's been a great supporter of the library in Kiwana, and their programs have been very popular. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about um, the library is on Evergreen, and yeah. so it's it's not just limited to the services that are in your building. If right. if you need something outside of that, that's all about connecting to the community again. Um, I don't know if people realize that everyone in Fulton County could get an Evergreen card, no matter what library their home library is, and they can use it in Akron, Kiwana, Albany, Fulton, or Rochester, and uh, that's a statewide program. And there's over a hundred libraries in it. So not only could you check out items from us, but we can normally find just about anything you're looking for. Yeah. Have it shipped for free right to your home library. It's just a great service, Brian. Right. And and we think of libraries as the, the place where we go to get books or information, but um, I know you guys offer so much more than that as far as um, I've seen GED 
education, um, mm-hmm. things along those lines. Things. Talk to us a little bit about the services beyond just the books that you guys um, can yeah, offer. It's, again, just connecting everything that's available to us through uh, the state or local organizations. Um, Overdrive ebooks. It's just a vast amount of ebooks. There, there's no reason not to find something to read anymore. Yeah. Um, just the connectivity, though, uh, for the youth that comes in, if just providing a computer, letting them uh, connect to the uh, to everybody, and uh, so you have computers there, Charlie. I mean, we, we have for six, folks. We have six okay. computers. They kind of remind me of the pay phones. Kids get in there. <laughs> Facebook and do all that sure. kind of stuff. Sure. But yeah. We also have a study room. It's got three. If there's a student that's trying to proctor a test or something like that, yeah, we have a nice lounge area to. Someone yeah. who has an Akron Library card or a Rochester Library card can they still come to Kiwana? Oh yeah. Okay. You bet. So you. it's reciprocal in terms of yes. the way that you, you know you it's go. It's all about in the membership of Evergreen, and you have to stay in standards with the state to do that. Sure. But all of Fulton County's libraries are top notch and they're yeah. all in that program. So, yeah, shipping it for free, ordering it for free, looking yeah. over it. It's not the old card catalog anymore. Yeah. It's all online. <laughs> I never could understand that anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. it's probably just as well. <laughs> but, and you mentioned, you mentioned some of the history programs that you have over there. But one thing that I've always been impressed with is the amount of, of history that you guys have included there. Talk a little bit about. I know every time I walk in, I see the pictures of the Kiwana High School classes, but I know you also have some some um, history, things like the Observer, and talk a little bit about it, some of those things that you guys have tried to provide. Yeah, the uh, library was uh, the benefit of uh, getting the Observer collection. So uh, good timing since the building's no longer there anymore. And uh, we've been working on trying to digitize that resource but not just the Observer, we've gotten local history from a lot of different people that's donated things to us from school pictures, to old town pictures, uh, yeah. sports memorabilia. Uh, we still have the cheese bucket. Okay. Uh, somebody knows what that is. <laughs> but yeah, we. And for pulled, those that don't, I, I think I've heard the story, but. It was a basketball trophy between Kiwana <laughs> and Grass Creek. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. We got the last uh, win, so we get the cheese bucket. <laughs> Is it tough in this environment for the independent libraries? You know, it is a struggle. We don't have the budget of other libraries, and we're kind of constrained on what we do. So people like Brian Johnson, the Community Foundation, is very vital to our success. And connecting to other organizations, uh, we became a member of the Chamber of Commerce this year, and I was able to use a couple of their applications to hire a new clerk. So things... uh, reaching out and just keeping connected and using other resources. Uh, RMC has been a great provider for us as well. Are you basically funded by Fulton County? The taxpayers yes. of Union Township. Right. Okay. Yes. And, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And I know you guys have a great meeting space over there. It, if uh, somebody's interested in using that, is that available to the public? You betcha, Brian. Uh, Kiwana is blessed by having a stage in the basement of their Carnegie. Not a lot of them have that. Yeah. And uh, we have it set up with a sound system and a projector and screen. So any organization that wants to come in and do a presentation, um, we did uh, host the uh, legislative breakfast. And uh, that was pretty successful. And uh, after looking back at some of the things we could do better, we were lucky to receive a grant from the Kiwana Foundation for a lighting system to try to improve that. So uh, we have a great space for any organization free of charge wants to come in and schedule something with us. Yeah. Charlie, I know a lot of the libraries do things like book sales. Do you do that as well? Uh, no, I do a book giveaway. Okay. I don't like counting money much. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm with you. So during the uh, fall festival, we okay. save our stuff. And then during the fall festival, when people are in Kiwana, we have a little book giveaway. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. And that would include, I'm sure, all types of books. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We get yeah. donations like everybody else, and most of them we put out, but what we don't, we save back okay. for the fall festival. Excellent. And I know you mentioned the sustainability fund. That was something that um, the foundation has been able to do. We kind of looked at um, some really key organizations in our community, had an application process, and, and helped create endowment funds. So every year we can take a check to the library and, and say, this is your fund 
um, earnings for this year and sure. use it to support the library so you have that steady stream of income. If somebody's interested in a program that's going on at the library or maybe has an idea for a program or wants to volunteer or wants to donate something, how would they go about doing that? Well, you just contact me at the library at 574-653-2011 and we'll talk about whatever you're interested in. We're always looking to be better and improving and staying current. Um, any kind of idea or help anyone wants to throw our way, we're very interested. Yeah. The sustainability award we got, it was uh, very nice to see uh, Fulton County reach out to the library and consider them something we want to keep around for another hundred years. Charlie, can we find you online? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a Facebook page and okay. we have a website. Um, what would the website be? Kiwana.in kiwana.lib.in.us Okay. <laughs> They always make it tough for libraries. Yeah, all, all the yeah. libraries have difficult <laughs> we, uh, website addresses to remember for right. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have Google, to go through a lot. <laughs> if you Google yeah. search Kiwana Library, you'll okay. find us. Yeah. Excellent. And then your Facebook page, I know you guys have a lot of updates about the program that's going on. How always do we find going it on, on there. Yep. Okay. Cool. Good what are your look. hours? Uh, we're open 10 to 6, Monday through Friday, okay. 9 to 3 on Saturday. Okay. And on Thursdays, we stay open till uh, 8 o'clock. Mainly because we got a euchre club that stays there and plays late. Yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> That's fine. So, Good well, reason. And remind us again, again, we're speaking with Charles um, Rude of the Kiwana Library. Um, remind us how to get in contact with you if we have a question or idea. Sure. Uh, always come visit. Come walk through the door and talk to us. Absolutely. We're always there and you're always welcome. Yeah. Um, have accessibility. No reason not to come visit. But you can call, look us up online or Facebook. Um, our phone number is 653-2011. Right. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you um, for the services that you provide. Yeah, to keep community. up the good work, Joe. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate the invitation to be here today. It's The library is kind of the hub, the sure. community center, the hub in, in Kiwana. So keep up the good work, all um, you and the board and the folks that you have um, working over there. It's always exciting to see everything that's going on. So Right. We got a pretty good staff there and a pretty good team. Yeah. So, well, if folks have questions about what we talked about, again, the deadline for scholarship applications, July 7th, um, back home again in Indiana, Fulton County Youth, Eric E. Smoker Memorial Scholarship, Ginger Miller Higher Education, um, Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship, those are available on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can look us up on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. Brian, I'm a little disappointed that you didn't mention that the annual report is out. The, it the is, Northern it is. Indiana Indiana Community Community thank Foundation. you for reminding me. <laughs> if, if you have not received it yet in the mail, um, they are in the mail. Um, hoping that I know some people have started getting them in their hands. Um, if you haven't received your hard copy and you can't wait, um, we do have that posted on our website. Um, you can look that up. If you didn't get a copy and you would like a copy, give me a call, shoot me a message, um, stop by our office. We have copies in there. That's always a big time. Kind of gives us a overview of the things that the foundation did in 2016. It's really really wonderful to see what kind of impact that we have in our community and for those people like you mentioned earlier who are into the dollars and cents part of it too it's interesting to look and to see how much the foundation continues to grow on an yes. annual basis yeah. money wise yeah and that's and that's again that goes back to our donors the opportunities that we have to do things like sustainability awards to libraries and grants to communities and scholarships and it's it's all because we have those donors that have really got behind the foundation and and said, you know what, we can do this, we can support ourselves, and it's wonderful to see how that has grown and continues to grow. I mean, that's exactly. that's an amazing thing. So, Brian Johnson, thanks very much for the visit today. We appreciate it, Charlie. Thank thanks, you Tom. for being here too. Thank you, sir.